Hello, my name's Al and today I'm going to show you how to service your Fulcrum or Campagnolo free hub body. You are going to need quite a few tools to do this job, but some of them you've probably already got and if you haven't then it's probably a worthwhile investment for other jobs if you like to work on your bike at home. You're going to need a 17mm ring spanner, 5mm allen key, a hammer and a punch, some small internal circlip or snap ring pliers. You need some good quality grease and a grease gun, paper towel, the new replacement bearings. The fulcrum code is RS-011 and the Campagnolo code, same bearing, different packet, is FH-BUU004. You get four in a packet, they don't cost a lot. Next up, you're gonna need a bearing press. Now this can be an expensive bit of kit. Got wheels manufacturing press here. They're about 60 quid for the consumer item. So it is a worthwhile investment if you do like to work on your hubs at home. All Fulcrum and Campagnolo wheels that are sold aftermarket come with a rebuildable through a body. This is a Fulcrum Racing 3 and it uses an RS hyphen 113 for your body. There is also an R0 hyphen 113 body, which is the same, but it's made from aluminium and it's a, a very light gray color. It's essentially the same inside though, so the service instructions are the same. With the quick release and the cassette removed, we're gonna set about removing the free body. So this lock nut on the end, what you need your 17mm ring spanner for, has a left hand thread. So that goes on there and we use our 5mm allen key and we crack that open. So you can see, turn it clockwise to remove it. Now it makes sense to lay everything out in order so we know where that it all goes back together. So we've got a bit of paper towel down here. Behind that lock nut is a spacer, and then our free body should just pull off the axle. If you find it doesn't come off, what you'll need to do is just rotate the axle slightly, because there's flats on the axle, and there's also flats inside the free body. And if they don't line up, you won't be able to remove it. So before you start whacking it with a hammer, just rotate the axle and see if you can slide it off. If it's been on there for ages, then the bearings might start to seize onto the axle, uh, but a little tap will normally, normally free it up. So with that off, we're gonna give everything a good clean up before we replace the bearings. So clean inside the hub here, so there's the ratchet ring, which the pulls engage with. Don't spray any degreaser in here because it could get into the main bearings that are in the hub shell and that will just dissolve any grease that you've got in there. Whilst you've got it apart like this, it's a, it's a good time for you to, to feel how, how smooth the, the main bearings are. You might want to service those at the same time, but these are feeling nice. With that clean, we can pop that to one side. And we'll clean up these pieces. Okay, so here is the free of body itself. Whilst we're working on it to save damaging anything, we're just gonna remove the pulls and the pull spring. You see there's a, a small hole in the back of the free of body. That's where the little leg of the pull spring is located. So the next one along will be the end of the spring. We can just remove that pull, work our way around. removing the pulls and very carefully 
unhooking that little leg of the pull spring from the free body. There's three pulls. We can clean all that up. You can really go to town on this. You can stick it in degreaser, whatever you like, because we're replacing all the bearings inside of there, so it's fine. Okay, so we've got everything nice and clean. We're ready to remove the bearings. So there's two bearings, one at the end here, they're both the same, and one that sits further inboard, and they're separated by an aluminium sleeve in the middle and the second bearing is held in place with the circlip. So in order to remove them, we just need to get our punch and push that sleeve to one side so we can knock out the bearing. You might want to do this in a vise, but personally, I find it easier to do with my hand. So there's your bearing. These bearings have a rubber seal on one end, but not on the other. It's pretty pointless having a seal there because it's, it's, all, it's all internal. Reduces friction as well. And then we have our spacer that sits in between the two. Don't throw that away because you're gonna need that when we put it back together. And now we can clean out all the old dirty grease and grime out of the body and clean up this spacer as well. Okay, with the majority of the grease cleaned out from inside the body, you should be able to see the circlip that sits within. Good idea to pop some eye protection on here, but we're just going in with our circlip pliers. And removing the circlip. Keep hold of that because you're going to need that in a short while. So give that a little clean. Now we can remove the second bearing. You're going to have to punch this out twice. First time you knock it through off its seat that it's on now, then it'll be in a bit of free space and you'll have to knock it through the second bearing seat. So you can hear now it's in the, the middle space. It can be a bit tricky to knock it out of the, the final seat. But there we go. And now our body is completely empty. Just give it a really good clean before we pop the new bearings in. Okay, let's pop the new bearings in. So here's the first one of our bearings. We're just gonna pop a bit of extra grease in there. A little smear on the outside as well. And this is gonna go into the freer body with the seal facing outwards. Okay, when we fit this, we're gonna need a 6,000 series bearing drift. And this is gonna to have to go in really nice and straight. If we don't press it in straight, it will damage the bearing and it will feel notchy. On the back of the body, use a big washer or a large press. Large drift, sorry. And then we're just gonna spin the lot together. Make sure that everything is nicely lined up. And we're just gonna drive the bearing past the first seat. It's now in place for the second seat. We're just going to line it all up and screw it into place. Don't over tighten the bearing, just finger and thumb. It'll bottom out on its seat. You know it's in place. That's enough. 
If you over tighten it, you just damage the bearing and it'll be all notchy. So there's the bearing sitting inside and we can now fit our circlip. So the circlip, the sharp edge of the, the circlip needs to face out towards you. Pop it onto the pliers. Fit it inside the body. Make sure it's snapped into place and it should be sitting in its groove just above the bearing. That's in there, so that's all good. Next up, we've got our sleeve. That sits just on top of the bearing. And we're gonna add grease all the way around that sleeve. Sleeve should sit in the middle and then literally fill the void around the sleeve in between the sleeve and the body, like so. Now we can fit our final bearing. Pop it roughly into place. Line everything up perfectly. Drive it all the way home. So we now have brand new bearings inside the body. Good as new. We're gonna refit our pulls and our spring. If you put a small blob of grease on the little seats that the pulls sit on, it'll help them to move smoothly and also hold them in place whilst you fit these and the spring. Pull spring, just take the leg, fit that into its, its hole and then guide the spring all the way around till it fits into its groove. Just check that each pull works properly. Before we refit the body, we're just going to put a small amount of grease on the ratchet ring and onto the axle where the bearings are going to sit. Rear body should just click into place. If it doesn't want to go in first time, you might have to give the pulls a helping hand, just push them down slightly before you fit it onto the axle. Next, we've got a spacer and our lock ring. Remember that's a left-hand thread, so turn that anti-clockwise, like so. and we're just locking it down with the 5mm Allen key and the 17mm spanner. So that's it, just check it spins properly, it's nice and smooth. And that's it, all done, ready to go back on the bike and hit the road. Thanks for watching, see you next time.